The Caitlin Clark impact on the WNBA has been nothing but short of spectacular. She's brought revenue, profit, huge viewing capacities. Following next season for the Fever schedule, she'll be featured in almost 17 primetime games, if I'm correct on that. The level of impact that Caitlin Clark has had has been nothing short of spectacular. For this league, it has been overdue for years for the WNBA to finally get its chosen one. And that's what she is. She is its chosen one. Every league gets one. They come along in all shapes and sizes. You had Michael Jordan. You had Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. And then you had Tiger Woods. They all come around eventually. And with each sport, you get one. NFL, I'm not sure who that might be, but that's another story for another time. Point is, Caitlin Clark has done what the WNBA has needed for a long time. An image. A player that they can get behind, that they can sell, and they can make merchandise off. However, there are some people within the organization who just are not as open-minded as others when it comes to trying to embrace Caitlin Clark. Whether it's out of jealousy, pettiness, or just sheer just sheer hatred, it's been very obvious from day one since she started making her impact. These people you know, some of them have been very silent. Ones have stood out more than others. But the point is that no matter how you look at it, these people, all of them, within the WNBA organization are far, far too old and should not be a part of it anymore. It's time for a new generation that can embrace the Caitlin Clark impact, that can bring in the revenue, bring in the profit. That is the point of this video. To understand how it got to this point, why people are disliking her, and the reasons behind it. Haters gonna hate. It happens to every professional that's in any type of sports. It doesn't matter who they are, from LeBron James to Michael Jordan, to Kobe Bryant, to Steph Curry. I'm naming strictly NBA players. Now we get to the WNBA. Caitlin Clark. She has a list of people that dislike her. But none stand out more than Cheryl Swoops, who herself is a four-time NBA champion. And yet, she's made it her personal mission to either say something, roll it back, or make a comment out of text trying to hide the intentional meaning behind it. I'm going to provide a list of clips, and I'm going to let you guys see what she's been saying, and then I'm going to comment on it. Indiana team, I'm going to say shout out to Lexi Hull. I'm a big Lexi Hull fan. I watch her in AU. Lexi Hull shot the leather off the ball in their game against Seattle and just couldn't miss. Kelsey Mitchell is just broken. She is just shooting the basketball. Aaliyah Boston almost a triple double. I, I know we're talking about teams where they can move and things changing, but if, if Indiana continues to play the way they're playing like this, they too are going to move up in the stand. So you guys heard it, right? In this clip, Cheryl Swoops does not mention Caitlin Clark, but mentions her other teammates. And this is the clip that started it all from her podcast. She basically did not put Caitlin in any part of the conversation when it came to the Indiana Fever. Why she left her out, no one knows. It's Your guess is as good as mine. Well, I think it was petty jealousy for breaking her previous record in college. Because Caitlin did break Cheryl Swoop's old record. A lot of people just think that she doesn't like the attention that the WNBA might be getting because of Caitlin. And I can understand that, but it's petty. There are things you should back off of and things you shouldn't say when it comes to something of this level. Caitlin's impact on the WNBA is a positive, and it will change it for the better. Now, we're going to move on to the next clip. 
And then this one, this one's gonna throw a lot of people. Oh, for people to come at me and say that I made those comments because I'm a racist, like first of all, black people can't be racist. But, like, that's the farthest thing from my mind. I grew up in a very small West Texas town, predominantly white. My best childhood friend is white. Went to predominantly white college, won a national championship. Pretty much everyone on the team was white. Like, we're sisters to this day. Her breaking the record, I think, obviously, is a tremendous accomplishment. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? So what you have here after this clip is a little controversial because I'm gonna go ahead and say what I've got to say that's on my mind when it comes to this specific clip. Racism is not a wholly white thing. It is a human thing. Humans have a bias towards other things in nature and in life, no matter what race, color, or what species they are. It just what, it's just what we do. And sadly, her concept that black people cannot be racist is not true in the slightest. Everyone has the potential for racism towards another race, even towards another species, anything. So that clip, very controversial. I've shared my opinion on it and I won't go any further or any deeper into it. But here's the next clip. I think what Caitlin has done for not just college basketball, but for women's basketball, period, I think has been great. The following, people watching the game, sellouts that we haven't seen ever. It just really bothers me, though, when, when people just take bits and pieces of what they want to take, and they don't listen to everything, and you don't hear everything. It wasn't personal. One, it was my opinion on how I think she'll be at the next level, because I do remember me saying that Caitlin, to me, could be the best best college shooter I've ever seen. When you put these expectations on these young women in college to go to the next level and be immediately dominant, and when that doesn't happen, then people come back and say, oh, she was a bust, she was a flop, she wasn't that good. Just let them do what they're doing in college, enjoy what they're doing in college, and let them become stars in the WNBA. <laughs> So you heard it right there. This was Cheryl trying to backtrack on her previous comments in an attempt to explain what her side of it was, as well as trying to explain that people are just taking bits and pieces of what she's been saying and not giving the whole story. This is an Aaron Rodgers argument, where you just claim that people have only taken bits and pieces and then use it to push their narrative. There's no narrative being pushed. The entire narrative has been on Cheryl's inability to acknowledge Caitlin Clark and her impact with her team. That's where this started. And when she has refused to backtrack on that directly by stating that she believes Caitlin is one of the people solely responsible for why the fever are suddenly so good. Slow to start, but then picked it up. No matter how you view Cheryl Swoops, she's an all-time great in the WNBA, but her ability to see past her own personal dislikes of someone, it's clear she can't. She's something about Caitlyn just rubs her the wrong way. So whatever the problem is, I hope she figures it out. Now let's move on to positive things that had been said about Caitlyn. Hey, y'all stop this foolishness. Y'all see the woman speed up. Y'all see her, Caitlyn Clark is getting the crowd and right. going. Y'all see Skylar Diggins speed up to make contact with her. Stop this. Y'all oh. mad because that corn-fed Iowa girl busting y'all ass. Y'all hey. said she too weak. She can't do this. She lead the WNBA in a sense. She cook it. Let her cook. Hey. Let her cook. One thing about women, they will sever a relationship quick. But the fact that the relationship was severed because there was a difference in opinion, that's unfortunate. You know, I have a lot of stuff, so I might mispronounce someone. I've tried to correct it. Right. 
if somebody tries to correct me and I sever a relationship or I'm no longer on speaking terms, we never had a friendship to begin with. To begin with, right. Caitlin Clark is a polarizing figure. People gravitate towards her. It's okay. Caitlin Clark's success doesn't diminish what Cheryl Swoops accomplished. Caitlin Clark's arrival doesn't diminish anything that they've done. I don't get this old guard. People wasn't phonetic. It wasn't buzzing. The WNBA and they people didn't talk about it like they do. Instead of being upset about it, I'm a ride the wave. Right. Look, I love Cheryl Swoop, but I don't think Na Nancy said anything that's wrong. Cheryl, you just got your, you, you know, your facts are off. <laughs> that was from Shannon Sharp and Chad Osinko's podcast. They were literally up in arms, especially Shannon Sharp, about how Kaylin Clark is currently being treated within the WNBA by certain types of players, other members of the WNBA staff, and even announcers. He was vocal. He was livid. And he was making it quite clear. Let her cook. Because it's going to be good for everybody. In a year's time, salaries are going to go up. Caitlin Clark has the potential to make WNBA female players make millions because of her impact. There is no reason for people to speak nasty about her, to talk nasty about her if they're in the WNBA. It's a good thing. Let her cook. So you might sit there and try to create this animosity or you might try to bring in, well, it, it, it racism and this, and she, you know, so there's no racism. You and I have been through this for a long time. I never came down the court and looked at somebody white or black and threw the ball to the white kid. I, I'm throwing it to the player who's the better player. They're trying to pit Angel and, and Caitlin against each other. They're friends, by the way. Uh, they're right. helping grow the sport. It's not a Caitlin thing. It's a people thing. I mean, people were so jealous of Michael Jordan back in 1984 when he came out of you know UNC. Uh, Chicago Stadium was half empty prior to him arriving. Then the stadiums were filling up. Then TV wanted him and the Bulls on every game. You know, Scotty just win $25 million the other day. That's not because of Scotty, that's because of Tiger Woods. So you might sit there and try to create this animal. You know, I've known Cheryl since she was in college. I, I helped do her shoe deal with Nike in 1993, took her to her first SBs. Uh, I, I've known Cheryl, I've coached her, have a lot of respect for her. And I, I got off the treadmill and I called her as a friend. And I said, you know, you can say whatever you want. You can have your own opinion about anybody, but you do have to get the statistics right. I mean, facts matter. And if you just get ahead of this and just say, hey, I made a mistake on my numbers, then this thing is over and everybody respects you for your opinion. You know, it's okay to have a difference of opinions. Well, she, she got upset with me on the phone and I was like, Cheryl, you know, I'm not doing anything to hurt you. I'm just sharing, we're, we're talking. And so our relationship it, it pretty much it is not happening at this point. I tried to talk to her at the final four. She didn't want to talk to me. You know. And as you heard from Nancy, who is also a WNBA champion, Cheryl has cut ties with her because she doesn't want to be told that she's wrong and it seems to me she's just another case of I want to be surrounded by yes men and not be told what I need to be told just tell me what I want to hear and that's not a good way to live but I'm not as famous as Cheryl so I can't tell her how to live her life nobody can it's her life but if she wants to cut ties with friends such as Nancy who again is just as great a WNBA champion as she is, then that's her choice. But for all intents and purposes, sometimes it's better to hear what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. Hey there, everybody. If you enjoyed this content, please like, subscribe, and let me know down in the comments how you felt about it and what you'd like to share. And I'll read them on over.